Okay, now we are entering into the second to last section uh, for the school year, uh, chapter 10. Um, and this 10.1, we're going to be, well, chapter 10 deals a lot with uh, circles. So, <clears throat> um, as we talk about circles, as we get into circles, let's go over definition of what a circle is. So, a circle by definition is a, a circle is the set of all points on a plane that are equidistant from a given point called the center. So right here we call the center and here is a circle. A circle is a set of given uh, is a set of points on a plane. So there are infinite amount of points in this circle. Okay, there's infinite amount of points in this circle, and all these set of points um, are made up. Are all all these points are all equidistant from the the center of the circle. So if we were to draw a line from any um, point on this uh, for a line to any of these points, they would all be equidistant. And so that is what the definition of a circle is and it has to have a center and we denote a circle with something like this so you'll see like circle um, P or something like this something like that so that's what a circle is okay now let's talk about some of the characteristics of a circle so a circle has a radius and the radius is a segment whose in end point so it's a segment Um, whose endpoints a segment whose endpoints are the center and any point on the circle. A segment whose endpoints are the center and any point on the circle. So here's the center. So one of the, if we draw a segment from the center to any point along the circle, this is what you call a radius. That is the radius of the circle. <laughs> okay. Then there is a chord. A chord is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. A segment. whose endpoints are on the circle. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we should um, we should label these. So I'm going to put radius as orange. So this right here is the radius. That is the radius right there. Now a chord, we'll do as red, a segment whose endpoints are just on the circle. So you can see that I have a chord right here. This is a chord where the endpoints are just two. It has two endpoints, and it could be anywhere on the circle. Okay, so this is a chord. Now there's also one other chord in this picture, which is right here I'm gonna actually do this one in this color right here this is also a chord but specifically this chord is the diameter okay so the diameter is a specific type of chord and the diameter is a chord that contains the radius um sorry not the radius that contains the center okay so you can see here that this is a chord because the endpoints are on the circle but it does pass through the center and so specifically this is what we call the diameter and the diameter of course is double the length of a radius 
Alright, next is a secant. Secant is a line a line that intersects a circle in two points. So I'll draw this one in green. This right here would be a secant line. So make sure that you understand that a secant and a chord, the difference between a secant and a chord, the difference between a secant and a chord is that a secant is a line, a chord is a segment. Okay. So here a segment kind of like it has endpoints, but a seek a line does not have endpoints. Okay, <clears throat> so that's a secant line. And then let's talk about the tangent, or the tangent line. Tangent is also a line, but it's a line. It's a line um, that intersects a circle. Um, that intersects the circle. at exactly or inexactly one point. So secant is two points, tangent is only one point. <clears throat> so I'll draw this one in uh, pink I guess. So the tangent right here, this would be your tangent line. Okay. It intersects in exactly one point, which brings us to the tangent point, which would be right here. So whenever I say point right here, that's the point of tangency. So the point of tangency is the point that it intersects. Okay. So tangent is a line <clears throat> that intersects a circle at exactly one point. Okay. So that pretty much um, is all our definitions right there. Okay. Now, notice here, I think we might go over this in a theorem. Yeah, we'll go over that in a theorem. Never mind. Okay. So now that we have all these definitions in place, we'll go to this example right here. And it says, tell whether the line ray or segment is best described as a radius chord diameter secant or tangent. Also note um, just right here that these can also be rays. So secants and tangents they don't have to be um, circles they could also be you, you can also have these in the form of uh, we'll just say this can also be in the form of segments and uh, rays. Okay, so like I could have a tangent segment that uh, has exactly one point, or you can have a ray. Now, a ray is pretty much just like a, a one directional line. Okay. So, we want to identify which one of these is which. So, this AC right here. So, AC from here to here, it wants to know what this is. Now, this is a segment, right? This one would be a segment um, where it's from the center to the a point on the circle. So that, by definition, is um, a radius. So AC is a radius. So for B, AB. So from here to here, those, that's a segment, but
but the endpoints are on both ends of the circle, but the center is contained with it, so this would have to be, so AB is a diameter. C, um, DE is a ray, so from here, so this point D, E, so you notice that it's only going in one direction. This is a ray, and it intersects at one point, so this one has to be a tangent ray. For D, this would be line AE right here you see that we intersect at two points so this is a secant line okay so really not too bad just use the definitions to identify that so in these exercises what I want you to do Take a moment, a moment, pause the video, and go through and name two radiuses, or I guess the correct word for uh, plural for radius is radii. Okay, so make sure you go and identify two radii, name a chord, a diameter, a secant, a tangent, and a point of tangency. So there might be multiple, there might not be, but just go ahead, take a second, and do that. Um, but I'm going to keep on going okay now let's talk about some theorems dealing with circles so tangent line to circle theorem so in a plane um, so you'll probably hear that a lot in a plane which basically just means on a flat surface I guess you could say so in a plane a line is tangent to a circle if and only if the line is perpendicular to the radius okay so we talked about tangents tangents are lines that intersect the circle at exactly one point so what this theorem states so tangent line to circle theorem states that the tangent line the tangent line is perpendicular to um, the radius of the circle or a radius so that's pretty much it so this tangent line right here and this radius right here they have to intersect at a point that is perpendicular. Okay, if not, then this is not a tangent line, which means there's probably actually more than one point of intersection, or it doesn't intersect at all. Okay. Next, external tangent congruence theorem states that let's say that you have some external point, so we'll call this external point S. So this external point, external just means outside of the circle. So this external point that if you take the a line and you make a tangent line from it to two points on the circle, then these lines right here, so SR and ST are actually congruent. Okay? So tangent segments So tangent tangent segments from a common external uh, external point are congruent. <laughs> okay, and those are the two theorems for I think that's all. I want to make sure. Okay, yeah, th those are all the theorems for this one. Okay, so. Uh, in this example right here, it wants us to verify that this line right here, ST, wants us to verify that this is a tangent, um, that this is tangent to the circle. 
So basically it wants to know whether or not that the point right here is perpendicular to this point right here. Also notice that we have here the shape of a triangle. So if this is a triangle, um, well, we know how to check whether or not it's a right triangle. So if we take the two shorter sides and square them, add them together, and if they equal to the longer side squared, then we know that this is going to be a right triangle. So basically, if we prove that this is a right triangle right here, then we prove that the this um then we prove that the radius here is perpendicular to the line tangent which follows this theorem right here which says that tangent lines are perpendicular to a radius so basically we're just going to use Pythagorean theorem to help us with the, with this so if we take 35 squared plus 12 squared does this equal 37 squared. Okay. So 35 squared plus 12 squared. That's equal to 1369. And then if we do 37 squared, we get 1369. So this is a right triangle. Okay. So because this is a right triangle, this intersects perpendicularly, so then yes, ST has to be tangent to the circle. Okay. Alright, in example 5, it says that RS is tangent to the circle C. So that means this is a single point of intersection. And RT is also tangent to the circle. So that is one point of intersection. And it wants us to find the value of X right here. Now because we know that they are both tangent, that these line segments are both tangent from a common point, external point, then we know that this line is congruent with this line. So we can go ahead and say that 28 is equal to 3x plus 4, and we can solve for x. So I'll subtract 4. <coughs> uh, 20 subtract 4 is 24 equal to 3x. Divide by 3, divide by 3. So x has to be equal to 24 divided by 3, which is equal to 8. There you go. I know I did that pretty fast, but I think the concept is pretty clear and easy to see. So in this example, exercise 9 and 10, um, we're just going to use those same theorems that we did before. So it wants you to find BD. So it wants you to find this length right here. Also note that it says that point D is a point of tangency. So we know that this line is tangent, which means it intersects perpendicular here, uh, perpendicularly. So this is a right triangle right here. And because this is a right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side length, which would be BD. Okay, And it says that point C is also a point of tangency. And you see that point D and point C are a point of tangency. And they ha both have a common external point. And it wants you, so if BC right here is 4x plus 6, it wants us to find um, uh, the value of x to the nearest tenth. Okay, so you need to find this length first in order to solve for x. Okay, so that should give you enough direction to finish these notes, but that is all for 10.1.